My next guest, he's a scientist specializing in type 2 diabetes. But about two decades ago, he was a 21-year-old sentenced to 10 years in a maximum security prison. Dr. Stanley Andreessen's inspirational journey from behind prison cages to teaching young minds at Howard and John Hopkins is now available in a book form. It's entitled From Prison Cells to PhD. And now with me is Dr. Stanley Andres. He's an assistant professor at Howard University's College of Medicine. He's also the executive director of From Prison Cells to PhD. Dr. Andres, thanks so much for joining me on Black News yes. tonight. Welcome to the show. What inspired you to write this book? Yeah, so thank you for having me. It's, you know, the journey inspired me to write this book that people that I've encountered both from, you know, growing up in the Ferguson, Missouri area, uh, getting caught up in the legal system before, um, you know, as a teenager, uh, and then going through the criminal legal system and seeing the barriers in front of me and really understanding, you know, this, syst this systemic aspect of uh, what goes on, you know, as Black individuals, men and women, um, try to make it through life. Uh, and so, I mean, the people I left behind is, is what inspired me and, and knowing that, that I've, you know, have a way to help support people in pushing forward. You say the journey made you write the book. Uh, talk to me about that journey in, you, in particular. How did you end up uh, incarcerated? Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned, I uh, grew up in uh, the Ferguson, Florissant area. I started selling drugs before I was a teenager, um, arrested for the first time at 14, continued making decisions that landed me in the criminal legal system uh, to the point that I was uh, sitting in a courtroom in my early 20s, facing 20 years to life in prison. Um, and, you know, I had this prosecutor telling me that I was hopeless and was going to be in this revolving door of incarceration and, you know, was pushing for 20 to life. Uh, the judge eventually sentenced me to 10 years in prison. Um, fast forward some time, I'm, you know, I can maybe hopefully get to talk a little bit about that, but uh, fast forward some time, I'm now, you know, Dr. Andres, an endocrinologist, scientist, and professor at Howard and Hopkins, as you were, you know, were mentioning, or formerly at Hopkins, I should say. Um, and so knowing the specific barriers that were put in, in you know, that were in place, and then knowing that, you know, I was fortunate enough to have this mentor step into my life that really saw this different trajectory for me. Um, and that tied with a lot of family support. Um, I was able to navigate my way to where I am now. And, you know, I, yeah. it's kind of this playbook that I want to, you know, provide to others. So, I mean, one of the key things about this playbook is mentorship. Talk to me about um, this mentor who you just mentioned came into your life. How significant was that and why? Yeah, that was, you know, a big part of uh, the change for me. I was at this point where I kind of felt, you know, stuck and hopeless. And uh, this was tied with, uh, you know, my father, who once I went away to prison, um, I had lost contact with him for making all these decisions that landed me there. And, um, his health just plummeted and he, you know, through the course of about 30 different hospitalizations and surgeries, he eventually ended up losing his battle with type two diabetes. So it was the struggle, the emotional challenge and distress of having to deal with death and dying from inside of a cage tied with this mentor stepping into my life. Um, that was the culminating things that kind of made me say like, I, I gotta do something different when I get back. Um, and so, yeah. you know, the mentor gave me kind of some tools to really, you know, push forward in this new way of thinking. Uh, but, you know, there was certainly some other aspects that really helped me uh, along the way, other support systems and family and friends. Why PhD? What made you pursue a PhD and why endocrinology? Yeah, so a lot of folks, um, you know, are ask that question and, you know, or uh, wondering what endocrinology is. And, you know, it's the study of diabetes and, and hormones and metabolism and, uh, and obesity. 
And for me, it was, you know, again, you know, seeing my father go through what he was going through, he was a relatively healthy individual. And I wasn't quite sure how the disease just grabbed him and like took him down this path so quickly. Uh, so, you know, I started reading about diabetes while I was locked in my prison cell and I uh, read my first scientific article on diabetes in a prison cell and just began to spend weeks and months even just diving into uh, this particular literature. And, uh, you know, I, I moved to this place of wanting to understand how the cell works and how it starts to not work in the case of diabetes. And, you know, that led me to pursuing what I pursue now as, you know, studying diabetes and, and endocrinology. Uh, before you go, give me or give my audience also, I need to help too, but give all of us a piece of advice, something from your journey that is useful. I mean, you're doing this important work. You're a professor at an esteemed institution like Howard. You and your teammates are doing uh, important work at uh, from prison cells to PhD, also known as P2P. You're doing all this amazing work. You're up here. I got about 30, 40 seconds to tell me, uh, give me a piece of advice to, to tell and to share. So, I mean, some of the numbers uh, are that, you know, 60 to 75% of people that step out of prison end up stepping back into prison. So um, within three to five years, if an individual simply steps foot on a college campus, it drops the recidivism rate down into the teens. Get an associate's degree, it's down wow. 15%, a bachelor's degree, 5% master's, essentially eliminates it. So, you know, we really believe in creating access to opportunity and we really believe in uh, providing hope to individuals. Um, so, you know, I would say that you're not alone is what we, a lot of people come to us and they feel like they're alone on this journey, on this journey that they're going on of trying to rebuild and put their life back together. Uh, I would say to reach out to us, you're not alone. There's, um, you know, over 700 people that we've helped across the country in 35 different states and internationally. Um, and, you know, you have someone to lean on in terms of uh, helping you push forward and you know having this sense of hope and you know we really think that we help people um the system kind of devalue you you know it takes away like your civility and your humanity um we really try to bring that back and show that people have value potential and um you know purpose in life and and we we help individuals find that so i would say well, you know you are absolutely find us doing or that find work some brother it is you're absolutely doing that work. My brother is incredibly important and I'm proud of you. I, I, I learned from you. I learned from your writing. I learned from your story. And today I've learned from your inspirational words and I'm sure my audience has as well. My brother, thank you so much for joining me and wish you the best of luck moving forward. Everybody, if you want to find out more about Stanley's organization, please visit from prison cells to phd.org. Also, do yourselves a favor and grab a copy of From Prison Cells to PhD. It's never too late to do good. You can buy it anywhere, but you should probably purchase it from an independently owned black bookstore. Just my advice.